Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today is going to be a check-in for the second quarter of 2021. I'm going to be talking about my favorite books that I read in this quarter and also doing a stats update for the past three months. <music> such a nerd and get really excited every time I get to make a stats video. <laughs> Thankfully some of you guys also enjoy them so I am so pleased I'm gonna have oh and I need a new battery. All right so we're gonna start by talking about my stats for the last quarter and then I will talk about all of the books that I gave six stars to in the past three months and in my personal rating scale a six star read is what I give to a favorite book of the year so um, I'm gonna share with you all of the ones that I've read in the last three months so again this is for April, May, and June. Starting off, let's look at how many books I have read in total this year. I have been doing a ton of reading, more than I even did last year. I feel like every year it gets slightly more. So far in 2021, I have read 211 books, which means I'm on track to read 400 books this year, which is the most I've ever read. So that's wild. In the second quarter of the year, I read 100 books, which is slightly less than the previous quarter, but that I, you know, I'm not upset about it. That's fine. And in terms of pages, that is 35,377 pages. That's a lot of pages. Yeah. In terms of format, it's interesting because I read 100 books that like the raw numbers are the same as the percentages, right? So like I listened to 42 audiobooks or 42% of the books that I read this quarter were audiobooks. This is not surprising. I think it's actually slightly less than it was in the first quarter. So 42% of my reading was audiobooks, 29% were physical books, and 30% were ebooks. In quarter two, I had five rereads and eight DNFs, which I think is actually about the same number of DNFs that I had in the first quarter of the year. That's books that I chose not to finish eight. That seems like a pretty good number. Here's a chart showing the frequency of my ratings. As you can see, my most frequent rating was four stars, which seems accurate. I do tend to give out a lot of four stars, and it's good too because it means that on average, I've been enjoying the things I've been reading. Next, let's look at the genres that I've been reading in the last quarter. It's interesting because in quarter one, my most read genre was romance. In quarter two, my most read genre is fantasy at 35% of my reading, but that is closely followed by romance at 31%. And in the chart that you're going to see, the romance will be divided up into subgenres, but if you add them all together, it's 31%. So that's historical romance, contemporary romance, and speculative romance. My two next highest genre categories for this quarter were nonfiction at 10% and sci-fi at 9%. I've, I have been reading more nonfiction this year and I'm not upset about it. It's been pretty great. Unsurprisingly, I've been reading a lot of adult titles. 68% of the books that I read this quarter were targeted at an adult audience. 28% were for a YA audience and 4% were for a middle grade audience. The average page length of a book that I read was 350 pages, which seems accurate. I've had some longer books, but like most books are 350. I've had some longer ones, some shorter ones ones, but then for the most frequent page length, that's unsurprising. This quarter, the earliest published book that I read was 1848. I read 33 books in total that were published prior to 2020, 16 2020 releases, and 51 2021 releases. So fully half of my reading in the last quarter has been books published this year. And so then of course, not shockingly, 59% of the books that I read this quarter were either advanced copies, books sent to me for review, books that I was reading for judging the Vivian Award, or manuscripts that I was critiquing. So yeah, like 60, almost 60% 60 of my reading was things for review. That's making, that made up a huge chunk of my reading this quarter. Lastly, we're going to take a look at some stats for author demographics of the books that I've been reading. In this past quarter, 76% of the books that I read were written by female authors, 19% were by male authors, and 3% were by non-binary authors. 48% of the books that I read were written by a Black, Indigenous, or person of color authors, and 52% were written by white authors, which honestly is pretty good. I'm aiming for around half of the books that I read being by BIPOC authors, so 
48% is pretty close to that. In terms of some of the biggest subcategories, 21% of those books were written by Black authors, 8% by East Asian authors, and 6% by Indigenous authors, which I'm actually pretty pleased about. One thing that I wanted to work on this year is reading more from Indigenous authors because it's not something that had traditionally been a huge part of my reading. Part of what's been helping with this has been doing the Indigenous romance read-along, so three of those six books are from that, but just in general it's something that I've been trying to make more of a priority in my reading. 28% of the books that I read were from known queer authors. Uh, it's possible some of the other authors are queer but are not public about it. That's why it says no slash unknown on the chart. That's pretty great honestly. 28% of the books that I read are by authors who are publicly part of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, yeah I'm really happy with that. My benchmark there is 25% and I have exceeded it. Looking at a couple of other things I've been tracking, 9% of the books that I read were by disabled authors. It's possible there are more but this is authors that I know identify publicly as being disabled. And 29% were by neurodiverse authors which is actually a lot higher than I thought it was gonna be. Like, what is happening with my lighting here? Which honestly is a lot higher than what I thought it was gonna be. I'm surprised. I never expect those numbers to be very high, but like almost 30% of the books that I read this quarter. If you are wondering what I include in that, because I know there is some controversy over what counts as neurodiverse. I don't know what's happening with my ring light. It's doing weird things. Sorry if the color keeps shifting. I like, I don't know what is, it's like freaking out. I don't know what's wrong with it. What is included in, what is going on with the ring light? Stop it. This is what I get for getting a fancy ring light that changes colors, dude. Just get like a basic one. This is annoying. So I know there's some controversy over what should be considered neurodiverse. People have very different opinions of this. For my purposes, I'm considering it to be kind of a larger umbrella term, which is going to include things like autism or ADHD, but also things like depression. So just as an FYI, I'm considering all of that under the broader umbrella of neurodiverse and I'm not getting more granular with it. With that said, let's talk about my favorite books of the quarter. In the past quarter, I gave nine books six stars, which makes them a favorite of the year, and that is 9% of the books that I read in quarter two. I think in quarter one, like 7% of the books that I read got six stars, quarter to 9% of the books that I read got six stars. And it is kind of interesting to looking at when I read them. In April, there were three books. In May, there were two books. Lighting. Oh my gosh, this is like the most annoying thing. It keeps doing this. And I think maybe like, I don't know if it's like when I speak or what is going on. I wonder if my kids like jostled it one too many times. And now it just keeps changing colors. What the hell? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, no, like these things are so freaking expensive. I wonder if there's a warranty on it. This is so annoying. All right. Um, behind the scenes issues of YouTubing, y'all. Uh, okay, so in April, do you see this? Do you see the lighting? In April, I gave three books six stars. In May, I gave two books six stars. And in June, I gave four books six stars. One of my six star reads is a book I can't tell you about yet, but here are the eight that I can. And we'll start with April. First is A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin. This is the second book in a sci-fi duology that started with A Memory Called Empire, and I freaking loved it. I think it is a fantastic follow-up. It's interesting because book one has one perspective and book two is multi-POV, but for me that worked really well and I think it solved some of the issues that I had had with pacing in book one. One of my favorite sci-fi duologies, it's got a lot of court politics, it's really smart, and yeah this was really interesting too because it deals with first contact and like what to do with an alien race that you don't understand. I loved it. It was fantastic. Another favorite in April was She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quinlan. This is a really wonderful YA romance. It is obviously sapphic and this is the sort of YA romance that I'm really a fan of where a lot of it is about 
the characters having internal growth arcs, learning more about themselves, learning how to be better partners, and having an early relationship that is a good learning experience for them without trying to make it seem as if this is going to be the end all be all of their romantic life. And I think that this book did a fantastic job of that. One of our characters is still kind of grieving the loss of a past relationship with a girlfriend, and they are kind of enemies. So it's like an enemies to lovers thing uh, with fake dating. And I just loved it. I thought this was a great book. My last April favorite was Malice by Heather Walter. Not everybody seems to enjoy this as much as I did, but I really loved it. This is the first book in a duology again. It is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty, where the evil sorceress falls for the princess. So it's another book with a sapphic relationship in it, and it's a villain backstory, which I really, really love. I think it's so interesting having these morally great characters or characters that could choose to be good or could choose to be evil, and the situations they're in and the things that happen to them might push them one way or another. I loved it, and oh my gosh, the ending of this book was everything. I can't wait for book two. I just thought this was great. Then in May I had two favorites. The first is a graphic novel. This is Amazon's Abolitionists and Activists, A Graphic History of Women's Fight for Their Rights by Mickey Kendall and A. D'Amico. I really loved this. Not everybody does, I think, because it covers a lot of ground without a ton of depth, but I think that's kind of the point of this book, is to briefly introduce you to hundreds, perhaps, of important women throughout history, briefly touch on important elements of issues of women's rights with intersectional ideas, and kind of start you on the path of learning more and digging deeper. I love it. I love what this book is doing, and yeah, definitely a favorite for me. I like a good nonfiction graphic novel. My other favorite book in May was The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, and this was definitely a surprise for me. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. I think this is a book that really continues to resonate today, and I think it's like an underappreciated classic. <laughs> you know, it's like the ignored Anne Bronte is kind of like the ignored Bronte sibling a lot of the time, and it's unfortunate because this book is just really, really phenomenal, and it deals with some intense issues, which I thought were fascinating because you get to see what it was like for women in the 1800s to be in an abusive marriage. And uh, yeah, I thought this was so great. I loved everything about it. I would definitely reread it in the future. I think it has a lot of rereadability and it was a surprise favorite. Lastly, in June, if you've seen my recent wrap up, this is not going to come as any surprise, but I had four books that I gave six stars to, three of them that I can tell you about here. The first one was Ace of Shades by Farida Abike Iamide. I really loved this and I'm so pleased that it's doing well. It hit the New York Times bestseller list. A lot of people have been talking about it and it's great. This is a YA thriller that is Gossip Girl meets Get Out. I think that's a very apt description for this. It's set in an elite private school featuring the only two black students in the school and it's a slow burn horror slash thriller. It's great. It's also got queer representation. I think both of the main characters are bisexual. I might have said in an earlier video that the guy was gay, and I think that's incorrect. I think they're both technically bisexual. I loved everything about this. I loved the building tension, the reveals, the mystery. I think this is such a stunning debut novel, and I'm glad people are also enjoying it and picking it up. Then for my favorite fantasy of the year so far that I won't shut up about and have a standalone review of, um, this is The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. Absolutely loved it. This is such a good fantasy. It is interesting because it's definitely different from Tasha Suri's earlier books. I loved Empire of Sand, which was her debut, and that one is really a fantasy romance. This is not. This is epic fantasy. It's multi-POV, um, so you've got multiple character perspectives. Perspectives. There's two primary characters, but you get the perspectives of several others as well, so there's a lot going on in here. There is a romantic plot line, but it's not the only or even necessarily primary plot line. There's a lot of politics. This is inspired by the history and mythology and epics of India, and it's great. It also has a sapphic relationship in it, if you're looking for that. I mean, you're seeing... We have a lot of a lot of sapphic books here, which I'm, I'm not upset about. I love it. So yeah, this was fantastic. Absolutely loved it. 
and I it makes me so happy because I keep seeing comments from some of you guys being like I picked up Jasmine Throne because of you and I love it so much and I'm like yes spreading it I'm so happy so yeah this was fantastic and my final favorite of June of quarter two of 2021 was Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard this is one of my favorite books in a favorite series I love the Witchland series it's really fantastic epic fantasy it is YA but it's like crossover YA I would say book one in the series reads more like YA fantasy but the further you get into it the more it reads like this could have have been aged up slightly and published as adult fantasy pretty easily. It's multi POV. Each book focuses primarily on a different character, but you always get multiple perspectives in each book. There's a lot of plot threads to follow and she leaves these little like hints and breadcrumbs, which makes this a really fun series to reread because you'll read a new book and learn some new things and then you'll realize, oh, the hints were there all along long and you can go back and reread it and be like yes this is this is what was happening here we just didn't have enough information to know that and I love when authors do that Susan does an amazing job Witch Shadow is phenomenal and also the number of revelations that we get in this book <sighs> kind of blew my mind. I can't wait to do an entire reread of the series before the last book comes out. It has been officially announced that this is the second to last book in the series. There may be spin-offs set in the same world in the future, but next book will be the last book. So I am definitely planning to do a reread, maybe a read-along reread of everything leading up to the release of the next and final book, hopefully next year. So... Yay! This was great. So there you go. I think it was a really great quarter. I read a lot of books I loved. I found some new favorites. I did a pretty good job of hitting some of my goals. Overall, I'm happy with it. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, I would love to hear you reflect a little bit on your reading in the second quarter of the year. So again, April, May, and June, what was your reading like? Was there a favorite book that you read? Something that you noticed about your reading? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.